Hello, it is Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday crossword, so we have a midweek, mid-difficulty themed puzzle today. And um, I should note that over the coming week and a half, I'm going to have um, travel on and off. So there may be days in which I don't solve the Daily New York Times puzzle. I'm going to try to have something on the channel each day. Um, my apologies in advance if I'm not able to achieve that every single day. I'll do my best. Um, and there might be a disruption to the um, the supplementary puzzles, the Wordle and plus word and, and connections and so on. So uh, apologies. If anything that you expect is missing, I will do my best. We'll see how it goes. Um, in any case, uh, today we've got a midweek themed puzzle and this midweek mid-difficulty edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Laura Sexton, Victoria Rajishka, Kathleen Quinn, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the four of them. They're benefactors of The Daily Solve Patreon campaign. That means they keep this channel going. They support this thing. I really do appreciate that. Um, as I do appreciate the efforts of everybody who's a patron of the Patreon campaign. So thanks to those four. Thanks to everybody else. And if you'd like to join their ranks, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the description field link where you will find the bonus videos available to patrons. I'm in the middle of the Boss Words Spring Themeless League uh, series. I'll try to get um, Boss Words Themeless League Puzzle 2 solved before I, I head out on my travels. Um, but anyway, those are up there for patrons as well as the official mug for benefactors. And uh, thanks to everybody who backs the campaign. Thanks as well if you subscribe to the channel on YouTube, if you like the videos from time to time, if you comment on them uh, when you feel so moved. Those things are all a big help. And then finally, there is that Daily Solve Discord chat server you can join. There's a description field link to that friendly chat community. Check it out. All right, let's get on to the solve. This is a Wednesday-themed puzzle by Drew Schmenner, who's constructed uh, around half a dozen puzzles for the New York Times, and it was edited, of course, as always, by Will Schwartz. Let's start solving, see how we get on today. Uh, Blank Lang Syne, so that's Auld Lang Syne, the um, song traditionally sung on New Year's Eve, um, or I guess as the as the clock ticks over, I guess, anyway, with the um, famous lyrics by Robbie Burns. And a variety of Indian tea, Assam is an Indian tea, um, and uh, black tea, so there we have it. Eel at a sushi restaurant. Eel is unagi in Japanese, or at least this eel in this context, in this culinary context is anyway. Um, literary character who cries, you're glumping the pond where the hummingfish hummed. Uh, I don't know, it sort of sounds like... Um, sort of sounds like um, Dr. Seuss, but I'm not sure exactly who, who this is. Hung loosely. If something was hung loosely, it could have been draped. And here we have, that's hilarious in brackets. So brackets often mean, and in this case, I believe they mean that we're going to be referring to a sound rather than sort of verbal speech. You might make it with your mouth though, or in this case, a different part of your face, your nose, you might snort because something is hilarious. That's hilarious. A snort. Sex in the City actress blank Jessica Partner, uh, Parker, Sarah Jessica Parker is that actress. Oh, the Lorax is the doctor. It was Dr. Seuss. I was right about that. And the character is the Lorax, who's the um, protagonist of the um, very environmentally themed Dr. Seuss book of the same name. Visibly in awe. If you're visibly in awe, you're agape. Maybe your mouth is hanging open. And Jeff Bridges' Big Lebowski stoner role, familiarly, that character in the Coen Brothers film, The Big Lebowski, is known to most as the dude. Here we have, when the going gets tough, the early bird gets the worm, e.g. Uh, that's a mixed metaphor. Um, is it a metaphor? When the tough get, the early bird gets the worm is a metaphor. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. That's not really a metaphor. I guess the whole, I mean, that one's not a metaphor, but I guess the whole thing is a mixed metaphor because you've mixed up the bit about the early bird getting the worm. So, so yeah, I guess it is true that this entire construction is a mixed metaphor, even though only one half of its source material is itself literally metaphorical. I think that's the case. I think it still fits. Okay. What about this? Unworthy of debate. You could say that was a moot point. It's unworthy of debate. It's no longer relevant given everything that's been said. What's 
needed for a who's on first routine, a duo. You need two people to go back and forth with, is that Abbott and Costello? Who's on first? I'm not sure. I don't remember who originated that routine, but it's sort of who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. And it, you know, the idea is it's all getting confused because of these absurd names these baseball players ostensibly have. Uh, garbage is tripe, maybe you could say that's total garbage. It's total tripe. Could be the case, but they're, I'm not sure if, if that's too much of a, a wild guess. Played the role of, if you played the role of someone, you played the role. All I, all I can think of is things like were, acted, I guess was. I guess it doesn't need to be were, it could be was. Yeah, she played the role of, she was this person. All right, why did I think were? Oh, I guess I was thinking they played the role of they were. Okay, that that was is fine. Don't know why that was so. Oh, so garbage is waste. Garbage isn't rubbish. Yeah, okay, there we go. Wide awake. If you're wide awake, you're alert. Oops, alert. There we go. American blank. American Samoa is a, a U.S. territory. So what about this? Huntsville's home, Huntsville, Alabama. There, I have heard of that of that town. And a flag waver's specialty, uh, specialty semaphore. So that's the um, sort of encoded flag pattern language that you can use to send messages. I think most classically in a naval context, but I'm sure others as well. I'm curious to, oh, four, semaphore, mixed metaphor. I suppose that's our theme answers, I suppose, end with four, that syllable. Okay, anyway, to walk loudly is to tromp around. Circuitry units are amps. Um, I honestly don't remember what exactly amps are units of. I mean, obviously something electrical, that that I know, but and that's clear as well from the clue circuitry units, but I it's gonna be something like oh, what is it actually? Oh, that's really annoying. I don't know. <laughs> I feel I feel uh I feel uneducated there. Okay, well, anyway, this looks like Sappho. Yes, lyric poet from Lesbos is, uh, oops, 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 Sappho. There we go. From, from which we get words like sapphic. So anyway, um, uh, classic Greek poet. Okay, sites at overnight rest stops are... I don't know, can't think of that one. To make amends is to atone for your sins, for instance. And a biblical verd, verb ending could be eth as in doeth, um, that kind of archaic uh, verb ending, which probably most people would these days encounter um, in that kind of archaic verse, the b biblical context or something. Uh, overhead features on sports cars are moon roofs. There we go. Um, I, oops, or moon roofs, I guess. Um, sorry about that. I, I don't remember what exactly a moonroof is. Is that, so a sunroof, what is a sunroof versus a moonroof? I don't know, actually. I couldn't really tell you. I'm trying to think. Is a sunroof when the entire thing comes off? No, that's a convertible. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's something to do with the size of the, of the, uh, the gap. I don't know. Anyway. Sites at overnight rest stops are, oh, semi, semi trucks. So you could have long haul truckers are parked at overnight rest stops and getting some sleep. That, that'll be what it is. Okay, a memo heading could be INRI. So you'll have a topic at the top of a memo. It'll say INRI um, and then list the subject of the memo. Uh, the Simpsons neighbor is Ned, Ned Flanders, the character from the, the uh, animated comedy, The Simpsons. And then what the stone is in a stone fruit would be the seed of the stone fruit, you know, a plum or something. All right, why are you in such a rush? Someone might ask, so soon? Maybe so soon, why are you in such a rush? We don't need to leave, leave immediately. City with 40 islands and nearly 350 lakes within its limits. Um, Oslo, um, I have heard, I wouldn't have known the numbers, but I, yeah, I've never been to Oslo, but I've heard this kind of thing said about it. All right, Southwestern Wolf, Lobo, um, which, um, you know, sort of a root for wolf in, in many languages as well. 
Um, what about this? O in World War II radio lingo. In World War II radio lingo. Is it oboe? I don't think I know this. World War II specifically. I don't, I'm not, that's interesting. I'm not sure what that's getting at. Screenwriter Efron, Nora Efron, is a, um, uh, was a successful writer, a screenwriter, and especially known for her romantic comedies. Whatever floats, I think she might have directed at least one movie as well. Um, whatever floats your boat. The sea, I suppose. The sea literally floats your boat. This does look like oboe, doesn't it? Oh, and this is going to end with four because semaphore, mixed metaphor, something four here. What is this? Uh, best actor nominee for 12 years, a slave. Right. Uh, she will tell Agio four. Yeah, there we go. Um, I hope I've spelled his name properly. I think I have. We'll, we'll check the crosses to be sure. Okay, if one doesn't hesitate, one acts. There we go, that's straightforward. A variety of Indian tea. Oh, right, okay, well, we've got Assam up there. Here we have chai, um, which also really is the sort of root word of tea itself anyway, so it's, it's a bit redundant. But there we have it, to say chai tea. Um, darn in Germany is ach, darn it. And if one suddenly encounters trouble, one hits a... Snag, maybe? Hits a bump? Hits a... I mean, there, there might be other possibilities there, so I'm going to leave that for now. Here we have famed art pa patron Henry. Oh, right. Okay. I don't think I... I'm not sure if I knew this name or not, Henry Tate. It doesn't... I don't think I did. Um, so there's a museum here in London, the Tate Britain, which is the original uh, Tate Museum, but then now there's also uh, the Tate Modern, which is an enormous modern art museum that I think is somewhat eclipsed its uh, namesake museum in popularity and, and renown. Uh, and anyway, Henry Tate must be himself the namesake of both of them. Uh, there are other Tate museums in the UK these days as well. Uh, dampens. If you dampens, oh, you wets. That's <laughs> straightforward. I'm yeah, sorry. Word with soul or sob, soul sister or sob sister. Those are both phrases. Let's finish off this stuff up here, though. Listing near a museum door, perhaps, could be... Listing near a museum door would be a... I don't know, listing. You might have a list of artworks, or you might have, I don't know, some kind of map or key or something. I'm not sure. Interwebs. Uh, that is a way that people used to frequently refer to the internet in a sort of intentionally silly manner in the, I would say, the kind of early 2000s. But anyway, it's the net. I don't know. Net isn't really as much of a, it's not really a jokey way to say it. This is a shortening of internet. So do I think that that's a good match? I'm not sure. It might be something else, but I'm going to put that there for now. Blank miss. All miss. That's, um, oh no, I think I've made this mistake before. I can't remember if it's Missouri or Mississippi. I think it's Mississippi. It's a univer U.S. university um, known by the name Ole Miss. Uh, I, hope, I hope I'm right about that. Oh, a donor, I see. A museum, you might see a donor listed in a museum, in a, maybe in a place where their funds were used to build that wing or something. And here we have Vivat Blank, Long Live the King. Um, Ray, I suppose, I mean... That would be the word for king. Let's look at the cross. Houston NFL player. Houston Texan? Oh, Rex. Vivat Rex. Oh, okay. This will be Latin. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, I guess so. Are the Houston Texans, is that a team? Uh, I mean, Houston is in Texas, which is why I'm saying this, but I don't think I'm familiar with the Houston Texans. I, it that might not even be the right answer. Let's look at the crosses. Doorway feature. A door jam is a uh, is a is part of a door. Web attachments could be oh, but question mark. So it's not um, doesn't mean an attached file. It's something else. It's something punny. Hmm, not sure about that offhand. Eve, who wrote the vagina mo monologues. That's Eve Ensler. Is that playwright? And here we have destination for scuba divers is a reef, as in a coral reef. 
Sensation on a roller coaster could be a thrill, maybe. Do I think that's right? I'm, I'm not, there are probably other possibilities there, but since that came to mind, I'm going to try it against the crosses and see. Manhattan, no, I think this is wrong. Manhattan Hoops venue in brief, probably MSG for Madison Square Garden. Does that, does that work with this? Sensation on a roller oh, G-Force. Right, okay, I was on the wrong track there. This is um, more of a sort of scientific concept than just a pure emotion. So G-Force, you know, gravity force, how, how many... I think it's essentially how many, what multiple of the force of gravity you're currently feeling. So I think G-force one would be just normally you're standing on the earth and it's feeling the normal amount of gravity. I hope that's right. Sorry, I apologize if it isn't. Web attachments inserts. I don't know why that would be a pun. Okay, what about this? In an unprecedented manner as never before, which again ends with that or syllable as we would expect from our theme clues. And then what some online blockers block. They, you could have an ad blocker that blocks ads. And then a Sealy competitor. Oh, right. Okay. Here's a pair of brands that I really do associate with the crossword. But now seeing this clue makes me realize I can't remember seeing it as frequently in the last couple of years as I used to. Um, Sealy and Serta are two mattress brands, two man mattress manufacturers. And, uh, they used to show up in the crossword all the time. I wonder if Will Shorts slightly cracked down on it because it was becoming a bit a bit um, overused. But anyway, there we have it. Serta. It's back. Sound of a roar, maybe. Okay, well, this looks like a strange word, but it'll be vroom, the sound of a roar of a, an engine or something. Practice piece could be an etude. So that is a category of... I mean, it's going to say simple, but some etudes are not simple. Some of them are actually quite challenging because they're intended to to force you to practice more challenging kind of patterns. But anyway, an etude is a piece intended specifically as a, a piece of practice for someone learning an instrument. Stood on hind legs with up, reared up. I always, I usually think of this as being reared up. Maybe it's not reared. What is this? Word whose work comes from the Greek for word whose work whose name comes from the Greek for sing. Oh, and it must be an ode, right? The official poetic form of the New York Times crossword. There we have it. So we had two sort of Greek poetic references in today's in today's crossword: Sappho and Ode. And um, I don't remember seeing this particular way of cluing Ode before, despite the dozens of times we've encountered it in the crossword. So there we go. All right. And here we have a kind of kind of school, med school, medical school. It was a kind of school. This does look like reared, doesn't it? Okay, the the horse reared up. Yeah, I, I suppose I suppose I have heard that. Okay, March Madness component. That's a phonetic hint to 1823, 38, and 50 across the final four. There we go, um, because we've ended each of these phonetically, as it says, a phonetic hint with the sound four. So semaphore, mixed metaphor. Uh, Chiwetel Ijo 4 and As Never Before. Okay. Um, several of something would be a few of it. To go full blank, to make a big deal of things in modern slag would be to go full dial? Is that go full dial? I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure I know this one. Uh, if one suddenly encounters trouble, one hits a, oh, it is hits a snag. I think that was my first thought. To escape would be to evade somebody. To escape them would be to evade them. And ending with lime or orange would be limeade or orangeade. Those are both uh, fruit-flavored drinks. And then an amount at stake would be a wager. And you could wager some money. It's at stake. And, oh, to go full diva to make a big deal of things in modern slang. Okay, sure. I mean, that's fair enough. Um, that sounds like a completely reasonable phrase you, whose meaning you could infer. Some traffic directors, cones, traffic cones, I bet this is with that, um, with that O there. My blank, put your money away. My treat, you might say, put your money away. Don't, your money's no good here. Close call could be a scrape or a, mm, not sure, what about this? Web attachment. Oh, okay. It indeed had nothing to do with the internet. Okay, that was the, I thought attachments was going to be the pun. It wasn't, the pun was on the word web. So it's a spider web insects could be attached to it. And a close call, I still don't know. That was a close call. That was a, 
scare. There we go. That's what it is. It's often, I, I do often find it helpful to talk through in a sentence because I, I've said this before, but probably not recently. And sometimes when I'm, if someone asks me, Hey, come help me with this crossword. If I, I just, you know, a friend or something, a thing they often won't realize is that the answer really does need to precisely match the part of speech of the clue. At least, you know, I mean, obviously there are different kinds of clues, like fill in the blank clues and and things that are just describing somebody, like NBA great nickname Diesel, which I guess I'll get to in a moment. Oh, it must be O'Neill, Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, but anyway, uh, if it's just a word or a phrase that is substituting for another word or phrase, it must match the part of speech or the conjugation of the verb, you know, things like that. So you should be able to replace it in a sentence. And if you can't replace it in a sentence, it might be another kind of clue, but probably it just means you're on the wrong track. So, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll encounter people who would say, oh, a close call, a, um, you know, scary or something, because that would technically fit the number of letters, but you wouldn't say that was, you'd say that was scary, but you wouldn't say that was close call. And it can seem like a sort of annoying distinction, but it, when you when you think about it this way, it actually becomes more straightforward and actually easier because you don't you you can be really regimented and and clear about it, and you don't need to think about a word, you know. But the I suppose the um, counterpoint to that is that sometimes words actually do grammatically work in sentences in a slightly different sense than the version than, than the sense of the word that might be the most obvious one to you. So you do have to be conscious of the fact that you might not be immediately familiar with every single sense of every every word. And and uh, the counterpoint to that is that solving the cross, crossword can make you more aware of those things and can, can give you a more um, uh, flexible uh, but still accurate vocabulary. So that's, that's something. There's a series of things to keep in mind. Anyway, let's finish this off. A close call is a scare. Anything else you might ask? Here we have derrieres. So this is French word for behind or in this in this case we're using it as a noun to mean your rear end rears and then cosmetic cosmetics mogul lauder estate lauder is a cosmetics namesake and there we go that was the wednesday crossword i think that was fairly approachable as far as wednesday crosswords go um don't remember really getting caught up with it particularly anywhere so yeah, nice, relatively gentle midweek puzzle, but let me know how you fared with it. And a very straightforward and gentle theme. We had uh, the March Madness component, that's a phonetic hint to four answers. So final four, meaning the final syllable of, oh, and also there are four of them. Oh, that's good. I hadn't even picked up on that. So the four, the syllable four becomes the final syllable of each of these four other answers. Semaphore, mixed metaphor, Chibatel IGO4, and as never before. And that is the Wednesday crossword. That's that. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back to, well, no, well, no, I will. I will be back tomorrow for the Thursday crossword now that I think about it. It's after that that things might get a bit dicier. So um, I'll do my best. Um, anyway, I will see you tomorrow for the Thursday crossword. Hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.